Good morning. It's good to see you today. Hope you're having a good day. Come on with us to Proverbs. We usually look at one of the Proverbs on Wednesdays, and today we're going to be looking in Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 23. We're going to be looking at just that one single verse. In Proverbs 13 and verse 23, to get over there with you, says, Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor, and for lack of justice there is waste. To think about that verse... Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor. The idea of the untilled ground, that's that's what the verse is talking about. That in the fallow ground of the poor, that there is much, there is much food. I want you to consider that idea, um, rather than me just repeating it ad nauseum. And, and to think about it, we understand and the Lord understands that sometimes things happen. Sometimes people get sick. Sometimes people um, face some sort, some other sort of turmoil, trial, tribulation, whatever it is, and, and they are not able to work like they they're not able to work like they used to work. The Lord understands that. We understand that. Accidents happen. That's not what this verse is talking about. Okay, think about another another proverb. When Solomon talks about, it, he goes by the. He goes by the vineyard of the lazy man, and the wall is all broken down. Sometimes walls break down because a person, they're, they're not lazy. They're not working for another reason. We understand that. The Lord understands that. When people fall on hard times, we need to help them. What this verse is talking about, though, is, is something else. It's talking about laziness, and it's talking about such things as that. So to just get into it, the untilled ground of the poor. What what do we need to make sure we recognize? One thing to think about our points. We must learn to work. It, you come up to the New Testament, and when when the Holy Spirit through through the apostles was giving directions for the early church, and they were told, "If a man does not work, neither shall he eat." Laziness was condemnable, whether it was the Old Testament or the New Testament. It is condemnable. We must learn to work. And in an age and time, and frankly, when the government allows people to not work, it encourages at times, and again, we're not saying that there should not be such things as welfare and unemployment and things like that. Things happen. We are thankful for the help the government gives. If help is needed, we understand all that. But it doesn't change the fact we need to learn to work. We need to learn to work. A lot of folks, they don't work, and it's not because they can't. It's because they won't. They choose not to. We must learn to work. In the fallow ground of the poor, there is much food. People need to learn to work because farming, as you think about cultivating and tilling the ground, and if you've ever done that, it is hard work. And sometimes people don't do it, simply because it is such hard work. We must learn to work. We must learn to work. Think about the Garden of Eden. Before sin ever entered the picture, the Lord put Adam in the garden to tend and keep it. I understand work changed after Adam and Eve sinned. Work changed. But even before sin entered the picture, there was work to do. Tending and keeping the garden. And it was good. We must learn to work, to not be afraid of working hard with our hands what is good. But also, we must learn patience. We live, frankly, we live in a society where we demand things now. We demand instant gratification. Farmers learn patience. Tilling the ground, as you think about it, this this picture the fallow ground of the poor. In the fallow ground of the poor, there is much food. It's going to take patience, though. It's going to take time. You have to work it. You have to sow seed. You have to water. You have to fertilize. You have to keep the weeds out. And it is a process. And it is not a quick process. You will get a harvest in due time if you do not lose heart. But you have to learn patience. You have to learn perseverance. And sometimes people do not work because they want something now. 
they will not work the ground they have because they want something given to them now. They want that instant gratification. And that's not how it should be. We must work with what we have in the fallow ground of the poor. How much ground does the poor have? Maybe not much. But will they use what they have is the question. And that's the question for all of us. Will we use what we have? The parable of the talents. The one talent man who buried his one talent. What should he have done? And what did the master expect him to do? Did the master expect him to do five talents worth of work? No. Did the master expect him to do three talents worth of work? No, the master expected him to do something with what he had. In the fallow ground of the poor, there is much food. You may not have much ground, but if you have a little bit, you better use it. You better use it. We must work with what we have. And in that, it becomes a lesson on in contentment. You might consider that idea. We must also learn to see potential. We must learn to see, think about it, and think about how the verse is phrased, that in the fallow ground, much food is in the fallow ground of the poor. Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor. Think about how it's phrased. If the ground is fallow, what does it mean that there's food there? You know, if the ground hasn't been turned over, you can get out a till, you can get out a shovel, you can turn the ground over. You're not going to find wheat in the ground. You're not going to find corn in the ground. You're not going to find beans in the ground. What are you going to find? You're going to find dirt. <laughs> so how is there much food in the fallow ground of the poor? We have to learn to see the potential. And in that, as we think about, as we think about dealing with each other, don't see things as they are necessarily. See how things could be. And in that, we see potential. These are just a few of the lessons that we learn from the untilled ground. I hope the study's been beneficial for you. I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a good day. Hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word, just a little bit of our daily bread. Thanks for being with us today.